before Kenny Ortega directed Disney Channel original movies such as the Cheetah Girls sequels, the High School Musical trilogy, and Descendants, the movies, he directed Hocus Pocus. Is the movie any good? Let's find out. Hello there everybody, this is Twenty Tiger Dude here and welcome to Chucky Attacks Halloween Extravagant Reviews as Kevin Falk and I are going to be reviewing Hocus Pocus. So Hocus Pocus, as I said in my intro, it is directed by Kenny Ortega. The film stars Bette Midler, Kathy Najami, and Sarah Jessica Parker. Hocus Pocus tells the story of these three witches that were executed due to them practicing witchcraft. And we flash forward to 300 years where these witches are resurrected. And when these witches create chaos around town, it's up to these teenagers along with the little girl and this talking cat to stop these witches. So before I review Hocus Pocus, my guest star Kevin Falk is going to be reviewing it. So Mr. Falk, take it away. Thank you, Tony. And hey, guys, it's Kevin again. Very happy to be on uh, Tony's channel once again for another Halloween review. So, Hocus Pocus, uh, this is a film that I, similar to Halloween Town, is definitely very nostalgic for me. I didn't watch this nearly as much as I watched the Halloween Town films, but it's a film that I used to watch a lot around Halloween time. I haven't seen it in like a very long time, so I was very excited in um, re-watching this one. But I was also a little bit worried because I wasn't sure it was really going to hold up as well as it maybe did when I watched it when I was a kid. And I have to say that while I don't think this movie is anything amazing, for the most part, I had fun with Hocus Pocus. It is the perfect example of just a really fun, quick Halloween watch that I think is, you know, pretty harmless, honestly. If the cast here wasn't as good as they were, and it didn't seem like they were having as much fun as they really were in this film, I don't think this film would work as well as it does. Really, I think the thing that anchors this film are our three main leads, you know, specifically Bette Midler, uh, Kathy Najimy, and Sarah Jessica Parker. These three are fantastic in their roles. I really love what they did here, specifically Bette Midler. She just, she goes for it, honestly. Everything I've seen Bette Midler do, whenever she, you know, is told to do something, she goes above and beyond to make the role as great as it needs to be, and Winifred is completely over the top. I mean, this is someone who's so over the top, she's like shouting everything, she's got this ridiculous accent throughout the movie, but Midler really embraces the ridiculousness, and that's one of the reasons why I enjoy Midler as much as I do, because she always does a really great job with um, elevating a role, and she did such a great job here. You could tell that she's just having a blast with this film, and she really just did an awesome job here. Winifred is essentially the most intelligent um, of the two, but the other two, I mean, they're, they're kind of hopeless, honestly. They don't really give her any sort of helpful tips or anything like that. They definitely don't make things easier, but Kathy and Jimmy and Sarah Jessica Parker are all very fun here. They have a lot of funny lines throughout the film, and I thought these three really just work great together. They were easily, like I said, the best thing about this film, and if they were in this movie, I don't know if this movie would be as, um, you know, beloved as it really is. And then the three kids in the movie. Uh, I thought all of them were just okay, except for one. Uh, the main kid who played Max, I thought he did a good job for the most part. He's not, like, the greatest actor in the world, but he's serviceable. I mean, there are a couple line derivies that are kind of like, okay, maybe that wasn't the greatest thing in the world, but I thought he was good for what he had. Uh, and then Vanessa Shaw, who played uh, Allison, she was kind of bland. I really, you know, again, she was just serviceable. Uh, Thora Birch, though, however, the little girl who plays Danny, she was fantastic. I really loved her in this role. Again, this is a child performance, and a lot of times it doesn't go very well, but this is definitely one of the better child performances I've seen for a movie like this, and she really did a great job here. She has a lot of really fun lines in this movie, and again, you can tell she's definitely having a lot of fun, and that's really what I can say for all these actors here, Jason Marsden, um, you know, even some of the smaller roles, uh, you can tell they were all just really having a blast, and that is one of the things that, like I said, definitely does elevate this film for me. So now let's get to the directing and the 
writing, which let me just air it off the bat, guys, that I am well aware that this movie is really dumb and that there definitely are a lot of things that don't make a lot of sense. And like I said, yeah, there definitely are some flaws and I'm going to point them out, but it's one of those movies where it's just so damn entertaining and fun that I'm willing to overlook them. I really am. Uh, but with all that said, let's just get into the directing here by Kenny Ortega. He really did a good job directing this film because it's just a film where he knows exactly what he wants it to be. He's not trying to, you know, make this Oscar winning film. He knows it's silly. He knows it's ridiculous and he fully embraces that. And I thought he definitely did very good job of just making a really fun Halloween film and I thought the tone here was very well executed. I was laughing honestly quite frequently to this movie and I thought that the comedy worked very well and there is some good horror elements in there. I thought that was actually handled really well too. So the directing here I thought was really good. The writing on the other hand, yeah, it's not the strongest. It really isn't. There are a lot of things that are kind of dumb about this film. Um, first of all, right off the bat, the whole plot where a virgin needs to light a candle, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense. Like, they never really explain why specifically a virgin and why they need that to, and, you know, why that, you know, makes, um, brings everyone back, brings, you know, summons the witches back, why that, and, you know, summons, um, uh, Thackeray back at this. They just don't really make a note of that, and, uh, yeah, it is definitely dumb, and the kids in general do make a lot of dumb decisions, especially in the third act of this film. There's a lot of dumb stuff that, um, you know, Max and Allison do, which, again, you, you can make the argument that, you know, they kind of, the way things go in the film, it's kind of understandable why they do it, but it still is kind of dumb what they do. They don't really make the smartest of decisions, and you definitely do see that. I thought the first 20 minutes of this movie really wasn't that great. I really was not feeling it. I thought that it was really forced and rushed and it just really wasn't working for me. Especially the main story going on with Binks and that girl that he's trying to return to. I just didn't really care, honestly. And it really felt like an afterthought. Like, I don't think the film focused as much on it as it could have. But when it did, it, I did think it did a good job with that. I thought, you know, Jason Marsden, he did a good job in the role for the most part. But just in general, I didn't really care that much about what was going on there. There's a scene where all the witches end up at this nightclub and there's sort of this spell that they cast and we don't really ever go back to it till the very end of the film and even then it still kind of feels like an afterthought it feels like it's nothing that the kids are overly concerned about it's nothing they're really thinking about and I did feel was kind of dumb that they just kind of forgot about it like the end definitely they didn't forget about it necessarily but I just feel like they could have focused on it a little bit more for me the film really does embrace how ridiculous it is and I thought the main story was actually really interesting the way that it's kind of these witches you know what they're trying to do and you're rooting for the witches because they're so damn likable however you know what they're doing is very wrong you're very much against them at the same time it's like you know you know definitely that these are not good people that you know they want all this you know they, they want to kill innocent children so yeah definitely it does go very you know they, they definitely are not good people in that sense the other thing i definitely will give this movie is for a disney film it goes really, really far with innuendos. I mean, I've seen a lot of Disney films of innuendos. I mean, there are compilations on YouTube of, like, every Pixar film that has one. But this is one of the most unsubtle nods that I've seen to a to any Disney film. I mean, they specifically point out, like, what the sexual innuendo is. They don't try to hide it all. And I'm just surprised they were able to get away with half the shit they did. If this movie was made today, which it actually is being remade, I don't know why, but it's being remade today, there's no way they would be able to get away with all, half of the shit that they did in this movie. It just really amazes me how they were able to do that because sure it was funny but it was really strange at the same time the fact they were able to get away with all that stuff however my biggest complaint with this movie besides some of the writing uh and also these these uh, bully characters as well. I've got to say there were these bully characters they introduced in the film that I thought were just really annoying and dumb and I'm glad that they were not in the movie for too long because they almost ruined the movie for me. They have some of the dumbest lines I've ever heard. But besides that, uh, really the other big problem with this movie is that some movies you rewatch them and you're like, oh, the CGI is not that bad. Not the case with this film. The CGI is pretty terrible here. And 
it's very evident that this is in the 90s and that, yes, you know, some of the stuff wasn't up to par like it was today, but it really doesn't look good. When they're flying, it just looks really phony, honestly. Like, you can tell very well that they're on wires. And then the CGI cat in the movie, the mouth movement uh, really doesn't work at all. Uh, sometimes it's not even in sync. So, yeah, the CGI really is a big factor in one of the reasons why this film, you know, to some, I think definitely, it definitely does have a big flaw in that regard. In terms of the score, I enjoyed the score. Actually, one of my favorite scenes in the movie is them at that karaoke place, and you guys know the scene. It's when they sing, I put a spell on you. They're at that Halloween party, and uh, they start singing, I put a spell on you. I actually really love that song, and I, I bet Midler, you know, if she gets the chance to sing in any movie, I'm down, because she has such a fantastic voice, and she just commands the stage immediately, and that's the perfect example of that. The way she's able to do that, she does such a great job with and I'm glad that they did give her the opportunity to sing because it helps she's fucking Bette Midler obviously they're gonna get her the chance to sing at some point and then the ending of this movie this movie really flew by like I said I thought the first 20 minutes were kind of rushed but after that once they actually summon the witches then I was into the movie and I was into it pretty much for the rest of the film nothing really took me out of it maybe some of the CGI to take me out of it here and there but for the most part I had a really fun time with it and it really did fly by for me Hocus Pocus, just a really entertaining uh, Halloween film. It's a quick watch. It's something that you can get done. Just really just a very entertaining watch. I definitely did enjoy watching. It is a film that I think I definitely do want to watch more in the Halloween time. I am definitely happy that I reviewed it. And I am overall going to give Hocus Pocus a B. So overall, guys, that's it for my portion of the Hocus Pocus review. Thank you again for Tony for having me on your channel. Always really enjoy uh, doing these reviews. And now, Tony, back to you. Thank you so much, Kevin, for reviewing Hocus Pocus. Now, Hocus Pocus is a film that I really enjoyed a lot growing up. I remember when I was very young, I would watch Hocus Pocus every year as a Halloween tradition. And now that I'm older, I was really wondering if Hocus Pocus was going to be one of those movies I enjoyed as a kid, but I no longer enjoy now as I'm older, or is it one of those movies that I can still really enjoy even though I'm older? And I'm very happy to say that even though I am older, I still think Hocus Pocus is a ton of fun. I still really enjoy this movie. Now, obviously, is this movie trying to be Oscar worthy? No, it definitely is not trying to be Oscar worthy whatsoever. Hocus Pocus, if you take it for what it is, it really is a goofy but really fun movie and it's a good kind of goofy. It knows it's over the top, it embraces it's over the top, and I think that's what added the fun factor of Hocus Pocus and it can also just be due to the cast as well. I really think the cast really brings it specifically with the actresses that play these witches. Now yes there are flaws with this film and I'll go ahead and just say it um, just to get out of the way what my flaws are really for Hocus Pocus because it's not like the flaws are anything like too major but they are there and you know me being a reviewer I still have to acknowledge that there are flaws in this film. As far as flaws do go I will say the first 20 minutes really was not that good. I was actually pretty concerned for a while because it's not like I hated the first 20 minutes. I didn't but it was just a little rocky. The pacing was pretty rushed too and the writing was not very good. It's once you see the witches get resurrected where, yes, even though it's not the best written film in the world, I think from that point on to the very end, the movie does really embrace its over-the-topness, but it was a little bit rough when the film does start off for sure. Also, yes, some of the dialogue is pretty bad. I'm not going to deny that. There is some pretty bad dialogue. Most of the acting is uh, really, really cheesy, that's for sure. There are these bullies, and while you don't see them that much, um, they are just your one-dimensional bullies. I will admit they did add some comedic relief. Um, I wasn't really too bothered with them, to be honest, but they're just there. There really is no point for these bullies. Like, you could easily cut these bully characters out of this film, and... The movie would be no different. Jason Marsden voices this cat because, you know, he's under a spell. Um, and I thought the visual effects on the cat, specifically when he's talking and he's moving his mouth, 
it looked really noticeable for sure. And Jason Marsden, although he tries with this role, when he is voicing this cat, I don't really think his voice matches this cat. And my god, I really like this movie. I really like this movie, but the green screen, holy crap, the green screen. Uh, it's really awful. It's so noticeable, especially when you get to the climax. The climax is the most green screen heavy, and my goodness, it does not look good. I get it. It's a film from the 90s, but dang it. Even some of the films that have come in the 90s have had better green screen effects. Really, even with those flaws, Hocus Pocus, it doesn't really take away from just how really how fun this movie is because that is what this film is. Now as far as the actresses go for these witches, they are by far the standouts as far as performances go. Bette Midler as Winifred is truly amazing. Like she really nails this very over-the-top character like she gets over the top right and that's and that really shows just how talented Bette Midler is as an actress she really is great as Winifred and you know even though all of these three uh, actresses that play the witches are great she definitely is a little bit more of the standout like when you want to talk about a performance that does over the top right Look at Bette Midler as Winifred, and she's truly great. She really fits this world. Sarah Jessica Parker as Sarah, uh, funny enough, uh, her real life name is the name of the character she plays. She's really great in this film, and you can tell that Sarah Jessica Parker, just like with Bette Midler, really is having a lot of fun. She really does shine. I really love how over the top she is, and she really does make it work. And that same thing goes for Kathy Jimmy. Like I said with Sarah Jessica Parker and Bette Midler, she is truly great. She embraces this role. She has a lot of fun. You could tell she's having the time of her life on set, just like with these other actresses. All three of these actresses are honestly truly wonderful as these witches. The interactions with these three are just so entertaining and they definitely make for some of the funniest moments, especially since these witches, they're out in the modern times and, and for them to experience how different the modern times are to 300 years ago was actually really cool. This movie is honestly very funny. Like I said, this movie really does embrace how over the top it is and the comedy just plays out very well because of that. The cheesiness honestly just had me laughing a lot and had me smiling. I also don't know how Disney got away with this, but Wow, <laughs> I didn't realize Hocus Pocus had so much sexual innuendo, like there's a ton of really dirty jokes. Uh, I don't know how that was possible, but wow, especially in this one scene uh, dealing with this bus driver. Yeah, that was an interesting scene. I guess credit Disney for going pretty ballsy as far as making these pretty sexual jokes throughout this film. And yeah, I won't lie, they did make me laugh, but I was actually surprised at the same time that they actually went that far. There's not a single moment where I was bored watching Hocus Pocus, to be honest. This is a very well-paced movie. Like, yes, even when the first 20 minutes was a little bit rough, I was never necessarily bored with the first 20 minutes, they don't linger on with the scene, no. They keep going and going and going till the very end, and I truly appreciate that about this film. And Kenny Ortega, who, like I said in my intro, he, he directed all of these Disney Channel original movies later on his career, he did a really great job directing this film. I really thought Kenny Ortega did such a wonderful job of bringing this world to life. I really did feel like I was in this world. I was really transported into this very goofy and silly world. I truly did feel like I was a part of this world with these witches as well as these teenagers, the little girl, and this immortal black cat that we do follow in this film. And even as far as writing, even though it doesn't 
always have the best writing. I did feel like for the most part the writing is pretty solid because I do feel like the writers were really embracing the silliness of this film and they were just really aware of the kind of film they were making. There's never a moment where I felt this film took itself too seriously where to the point where I was taken out of the film and I'm no longer having fun with it. I think as far as just having fun with the film, it is pretty consistent from the moment we see these witches resurrected to the very end. The cinematography is very nice looking too. I do think it's very well shot. Not exactly with those green screen effects. Besides that, I do think that the cinematography uh, was actually really good. Now, as far as the teenagers go, we follow Max and Danny, who play these, you know, typical teenagers, the guy and the girl. They have some kind of liking for each other. We follow them. They're not characters I hated following. They're just kind of whatever. Uh, but I do think the actors were serviceable. They're serviceable. They're not good per se, but I do think they're serviceable and they are enough for me to get through the movie. And luckily they're not characters I necessarily hated. But I will say, as far as human performances go, like regular humans, this little girl is easily the standout as far as all of these humans go. She plays the little sister of Max and she is so, so good. She adds so much charm and personality to his character. She has this snarky attitude, but a good kind of snarky. When Max tries to treat her as if she's dumb, she really isn't. She doesn't really buy into Max's games, and that was really cool to see. I do like the score here, too. I thought the score had this nice Halloween vibe. Well, I mean, this movie is called Hocus Pocus. This is a movie about witches, and this is a movie that should really get you into the Halloween spirit. And the score alone really does get you into the Halloween spirit, and it does match this overall atmosphere. And you could tell that this movie is having fun with itself when it even has a karaoke scene. There's actually a scene where these witches um, are actually singing uh, and it's a lot of fun. It was actually really cool to see that and not for nothing but I thought the actresses, you know the ones that played the witches, they did a very good job of actually singing. And Sarah Jessica Parker even has a little brief moment where she's flying on the broom and she's just singing a little bit. And I have to say, she sounded quite lovely in that one moment. Although, yes, the climax is very green screen heavy, I can still have fun with what's going on. And not for nothing, but I thought Hocus Pocus actually ended in quite a heartwarming note. It was actually very cute. It was very nice. It, it ended on a pretty heartwarming note that I actually really appreciate it. Overall, I think Hocus Pocus is a very solid film. This is the perfect film to watch on a time like Halloween. This is a film that just had me laughing a lot. It had me smiling a lot. I think the, uh, films like this really work for Kenny Ortega. He was definitely the right choice to honestly direct a movie like Hocus Pocus. A lot of credit definitely goes to him. Hocus Pocus, yes, it's cheesy. It's very, very cheesy, but if you take it for what it is, it is one of those films you could have fun watching, especially around a time like Halloween. I'm going to give Hocus Pocus three out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about Hocus Pocus. And I would love to thank Kevin so much for being here to review Hocus Pocus. He's a very great guy. He has a great channel. If you guys want to check out Kevin's channel, I will leave a link in the description down below. This is 22 Tiger Dude here. And don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power.